We race a very small percentage of the time throughout a year. We'll spend 300 days of the year preparing for nine 90 minute races. So the chances of having opportunities for World Cup podiums and World Championship titles are so small and we can control what we can in training camps and trying to stay on top of fatigue and at the end of the day you can prepare as much as you physically can but energy and the group environment is ultimately what is going to reflect in your mental state. I would say, doing what I was doing before, I was not confident that I would get back to the podium. Um, I, I truly believe that if you want to make change, you have to make hard changes in your life. And that's what this team is. Being able to bring the people in that I need and bring the partners that I need on board, um, I think is the best shot at, at having that, that chance at getting back to the podium. We're in a day and age where there are so many girls, like I'm talking 20, 25 girls, that are hungry and they want those medals at World Cups and they are vicious. Like it is aggressive and it is, like it's hard. It's so hard to crack the top 10. But if I have a shot at getting back there, it's gonna be, you know, focusing on what I, what my needs are as an athlete and um, environment has everything to do with that. So. Uh, is there pressure? For sure, there's my own desire to get back on the podium, um, but I've never been a rider that really views desire as pressure. I see it as opportunity and I see it as an empowering stage to, to work towards. So I truly think that if I, if I am able to get back there, that this was the step that I needed to take to get there. I think environment is very important for athletes because we are so connected to our emotions. Like it's so precious to us. Like racing, uh, we, want, we want to like push ourselves. We want to do better. So like everything is a little emotions related. So we are more careful with our environment for that because if there is something wrong with it, uh, it reflects in our race. It reflects in our training. So it makes a huge difference for us to. Uh, to have good people in our corner. <laughs> Sometimes you can be the bad energy, like, so like you always have to be careful with that. A lot of the time athletes get so narrow focused and so tunnel visioned with what they're setting out to do and they forget that there's a greater impact that they can have on the world and the communities around them. And it's really important that we invest as much time into you know connecting with those communities and connecting with people but cycling is a lifestyle and it doesn't have to just be training and racing it's so much bigger than that and it's always been bigger than that for us we're here at heartland in on vancouver island and we're gonna i guess join the simbs network and we're gonna do some trail maintenance because you know there's just so many riders so the maintenance becomes even more important and so I think it's important for us to come out and meet these people and thank them in person and be able to help with our own blood sweat and tears all I'm seeing is a dog in the distance and he's pooing at the moment but <laughs> when he's done we're going to meet <laughs>
The trail building day was awesome. I genuinely like to get down in the dirt and work. I love to use my hands and go, you know, pick up shovels and like just get dirty and, and actually like do some labor was so satisfying. Emily, what are you doing? I'm actually <laughs> rock hunting. It's so important to try and help and support these trail associations and volunteers because these trails are having volume that they've never seen before and with cycling booming as a whole, these trails need a lot of work to maintain. It's amazing how many hours goes into building and maintaining these trails. Our four hours of work between the, the group of us, we really only made change to like a five foot section. Like we were working hard, like I should have wore a heart rate monitor um, to, to just kind of like keep track of like how much effort really goes into even the smallest spot. Everyone can have their part and, and reach out to their local associations and, and just see what they can do because there's always volunteers that are needed and I think that's truly where it starts. It's in your community with your association. It's all about leverage. Like there's no way in hell I could ever dream of lifting it and rolling it up. I don't know if the camera catches how steep this slope is, but all the good rocks are down at the river, so I gotta come up. You can construct a trail, but still make it look like we didn't break anything in the forest. So it's important to build trails to take care of the trail but take care of the nature too. Victoria is a really tropical climate in Canada with it just being a, the climate that it is it's, it's more like rainforesty and the west coast is the best coast as they say so for mountain biking it's, it's pretty spectacular because we have this trail network's basically right outside the door. And the trail network here in particular has the most diversity of terrain from like slick rock slabs to technical jumps and gaps and, and flow sections. So it is a really perfect place to be a mountain biker. life and sport in particular, there's two, I guess, entities that have to collide and it has to be physical strength and mental strength. We went to this really cool space in Victoria called Third Space Movement. It's a collective of practitioners, you know, you get your massage therapist, your physiotherapist, these trainers and, and just as a whole, it's just this amazing facility. Welcome to the Thunderdome. <laughs> It's exciting to have you guys. If you guys take a look over here, oh, no. this, is, this is your project. Oh, boy. <laughs> we get to unpack it. Yeah. Adam! This is work for you guys. So we're inducing the um, discomfort on our own. The point of learning the breath work prior to doing something crazy, like submerging your entire body into ice water, um, was to teach us, you know, when we get into those moments of discomfort, and your body is like rejecting everything that you're about to do in order to quiet those thoughts and to control your body. And because your body can absolutely be submerged in cold water, it's just really, really, really uncomfortable. Has anyone ever done a full neck ice bath before? Okay, this is exciting. So we're gonna do a little moving around just to get our body a little bit more ready for what we're about to do. So let's all sit in a 90-90 position. So for 90-90, that's gonna be a 90 degree bend in your knee and hip. And you're gonna use your hand for a kickstand here. We're gonna just open up our diaphragm a little bit more because we wanna really make sure that when we get into the, into the tubs, we're able to use that breathing and those big, long, deep exhales to kind of calm our nervous system because initially your body's going to freak out. Your body's going to think of it as I'm going to die. And we know we're not gonna die, but we're still living with the same hardware that we've had you know, 200,000 years ago, but we've got completely different software up top. And we're gonna think big breaths in through the nose and let it go through the mouth. 
I mean, I definitely came into this wanting to really learn from. I wanted to use the techniques that we had learned and, and actually absorb them. So I took it quite seriously, but I also knew that it was a group bonding activity that we, we wanted to have some fun with. It was lighthearted. Um, it was at the end of the day. It was kind of just an extra thing uh, that we wanted to do as a group. We feeling ready? Mentally, emotionally? Not feeling at all. Okay, well, let's do one last little breathing technique to get our bodies ready for this. What we're gonna do, just like how Emily was talking about this idea of creating that slow exhale and almost a little bit of resistance, we're gonna take big breaths in, and as we exhale, we're gonna think about tensing our core. Almost imagine as if we're trapping that air in our belly. And as we contract the rest of our body, we're going to pressurize on the way out. Big breath in, exhale. We're gonna feel cold when we go in here. It's not that we're not gonna feel the sensation, it's that we're just going to experience it. We're gonna detach ourselves from what we're actually feeling. We're gonna slowly step in with the right leg first, then the left leg. We're just gonna walk right in, one fluid motion. We're not gonna pause. We're just gonna go right in all the way up to our waist, then slide in towards our chest. Just an experience, detach yourself from it, and let's go in the water. Do not torture yourself like that. There we go. Slowly get those dead torso in, hips down. I want you to look me both in the eye. Perfect, slowly bring that chest in. Now let's start to get that breathing under control. So big breath in through the nose. Oh, sigh it out through the mouth. Let's go, you got it. Great job, get those shoulders in under the water. Again, give me a look. Slow the breathing, bring it down, buddy. Get it under control. Once you get that breathing under control, everything is under control. Nice job. Just do three more big breaths, okay? Big breath in, big breath out. In okay. through the nose. I was freezing cold, like, it was, it was ice chunks that never melted and they'd sat in there for several hours. So that water was bloody cold, way colder than like the ocean here in Victoria. So again, we don't want to do too much. That dose is important, right? So even though we can do it, doesn't oh. mean we should do it. Oh, so why don't we, <laughs> why don't we get out in the next couple breaths? Sound okay. good? He's kicking me out. I'm good to hang out for a while. It's for your own good. So even when I doubt myself in, you know, training and travel and plans and, and everything, there's these little, um, activities that can kind of remind you that no you, you can take control and you can you can have a better outlook on something uncomfortable you're gonna get back into that breathing so it's gonna be big inhales and nice it's actually not cold out <laughs> <laughs> next crew so again nice and slow in through the nose out through the mouth nice and slow steady the breath Oh my god, I'm very competitive, so like I was so ready to be on the ice bath for like five minutes and beat everyone. Em went first and she just stayed there for like two minutes, three minutes and she looked so composed and I went in the bathtub and I stayed like 10 seconds and <laughs> I was like super not okay. <laughs> so it's nice to, to learn from her in that for sure. We're gonna make our way back in onto the mats and we're gonna do a little bit of movement to get our bodies warmed up again, okay? Hi everyone, uh, my name is the, oh no, cut that. This takes a lot of brain. In depth about why we'd want to use cold water. Is <laughs> <laughs> and it begins our Coming to training camp, oh this is going to be so bad. Mm. You have fuzzy peaches? What am I saying? I'm the different. And then just... <laughs> Guys, weight is everything, and on, stop wrestling the leaf. You're welcome, Liam. I'm sure you can piece it together. <laughs>